G'day, Raf here from Prop Maker. This is the channel that helps you make stuff and restore stuff. This week, we're going to continue our videos on restoring a 1979 Williams pinball machine. So we're going to address one small little issue in this whole process. And that is, just how much is this freaking costing me? <laughs> that and a quick status report of where we're at right now. Roll the thing. Okay, so just how much have I spent so far? That's what we're going to look at today. And we're also going to look at what stuff I've actually accumulated so far in the four or five weeks into this project and what stuff haven't I got yet uh, that I probably need to get on to ordering. So if you remember back at the uh, uh, back in that very first assessment video there were a number of things missing and a bunch of those things uh, were things like the boards inside the backboard. You know, we had the CPU board or the MPU board, they call them in, uh, in pinball machines, but we didn't have uh, all of the other boards to go with it. Um, we had some of the score panels and things like that, uh, score displays or, uh, yeah, score displays. Um, some of them were damaged and, and that sort of thing. So those things we're going to look at. We also looked at the play field, if you remember, and the play field had a few issues going on um, in regards to missing things and uh, some of just the old um, mechs uh, that you have on that play field that just needed to be replaced. Um, a, a lot of the coils that were underneath that, uh, that play field were either missing or the ones that I did find, if you recall, were black and uh, probably in need of replacing anyway. Um, so, what have I got so far? So, not counting, sorry, put, not counting things that we've already had, which is things like uh, the score panels and score display boards, which we've got a collection of here to go through. We're not counting that. And even if we were, it's still actually all of these boards which were the, the um, main display controller and all the small uh, small displays for each player um, were all given to me with the actual pinball machine. So they cost me no more than the original pinball machine. So let's just put those over here. Also, by the same token, um, Russell at, at uh, Sapper, um, yeah, let me just get that completely correct. So my good friend Rusty over at Sapper, who, um, who sold me the machine and is a, a very good mate, um, he also, you know, he sort of took pity on me on things that were missing out of this particular thing when I actually bought it off him. So um, he went scrounging around and actually uh, went looking for things. And so he also sourced me a power supply board. So this is what's going to basically distribute the power throughout the system. Um, so we got one of those, so that's pretty good. Let's set that there. Um, he also gave me a, a spare display, which we can, I believe, use with the displays that we've got here. And that's the six six digit displays. That's because the Williams 1979 pinball is a system six, system six meaning six figures along the displays. Um, so, yeah, pretty good. I'll just quickly video those. That's good. Just gonna stick that over there. So then I went back to Rusty's and said, oh, look, you know, we, we still haven't got all of these boards. So we went uh, scrounging and searching high and low in the back of the uh, cupboards and things out there at the, uh, at the arcade that uh, Rusty owns and runs. And he 
found me some more things. So we found we found a sound board. So this takes care of all of the sound effects and things from the game. Um, this also has attached the magic uh, volume knob. So that's that. We also now uh, we also shall get to that in a minute. We also, if we unwrap this, we also found a a driver board. So there are probably a few issues that are going to be. Um, happening with this board um, but it's this board is pretty pretty good and it looks in pretty good nick so very wrapped that we were able to locate one of these so it's a system system six driver board um, and this sits directly underneath the MPU board that was in the back box and this long channel here uh, basically all of the pins from that board go through this and uh, it's a very long connector so yeah I was very very happy because I really wanted to restore this particular machine um, with as much original parts as possible because with the Jungle Lord again I didn't have many of the boards um, if any and uh, I ended up going with an aftermarket replacement um, which was uh, from a mob called Pinball Dreams, I think. Pinball Mayhem, Pinball Dreams, can't remember. I'll put the link in the show notes. And uh, that uses an NW7 board, which basically is a replacement board for all of those boards all in one. And there's a few issues with uh, using those as well because sometimes they can be a bit glitchy. Sometimes they don't quite behave exactly as the original boards do. So... So, so that's pretty good. We have our driver board, we have our sound board, we have our power, and we know that we had the MPU board sitting there in the back box. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, also, Rusty down the, and this is um, just a bit cosmetic -y, but um, uh, a couple of locks. So a lock for the door, and uh, this is one for uh, I believe one for uh, the time warp and also one for my journal ward um, and a couple of keys um, so and it may actually not even be for jungle it might even be for the the back box anyway so there's uh, then we located uh, this rather large capacitor um, and these capacitors can be quite dangerous to handle I'll keep this in the bag but this will actually hold up to 30,000 volts into it, so hence the reason why you've got to be a bit careful around them. I'm not sure I'm actually going to need this or require this, and I might actually hand it back to Rusty. Um, the, main, uh, the main reason for that is that um, in the System 6 and 7s, and I think even earlier models of the Williams Pinball machines, they came with a bit of an issue in regards to uh, power rectification and... Uh, and basically what would happen is that um, without them, without going too into detail, because it might make for another video, um, in fact it will make for another video, because I intend to actually uh, replace that with my own circuit. Um, so replacing uh, the power rectifiers um, and capacitor uh, with my own set, as well as building in some fuse holders and some fuses so that uh, it's, it doesn't basically become a bit of a fire risk. Anyway, so that's our first box down and I'm happy to say with all of those little innovations, happy to say with all of this so far on the table, it's cost me no more than the original pinball machine cost me. Um, and we'll get to that tally sheet in a minute so uh, the next thing that was missing 
was our transformer. Now I went hunting high and low and couldn't find a transformer at all. Um, I did um, find one in the States who wasn't willing to send it to Australia and I found one in Victoria where um, and I, I do may still have to go back to um, uh, this great guy in Melbourne and purchase it but um, we came up with another solution before uh, to try before we actually go down that path so I have located one in Melbourne um, but it was connected to a whole bunch of other stuff he and also we didn't really know whether it actually worked or not it still uh, was a bit iffy and being at around the $300 mark I was just a bit wary went to Russell and said oh look you know is there anything that uh, you know that we can do locally um, and so we uh, he went searching and uh, while he was searching I then went into the schematics of all of the Williams pinball machines of that era and had a look at the inputs and the outputs of the transformers and I was pleasantly surprised to find that although some of the wiring colors were different as long as you knew which transformer uh, which machine it came out of you generally could map pretty much one-to-one -one the wires coming out of most of those uh, those late 70s uh, Williams transformers and re rejig them um, maybe with a small harness to keep things the same colors as far as um, uh, as far as wires go um, so what we did was Russell found me and sourced me an old transformer still complete on the board um, now on the Williams 1979 machine the transformers were sitting up in the back box whereas this particular one came from a Jungle Lord machine and actually sat down in the cabinet um, I'm still toying with the fact that I want to stick it into the back box anyway um, so I might yeah, remove all of this off this board and and piece it the way that the time warp machine uh, was pieced together we still don't really know much about this however we do know that there's a couple of maybe small color changes on the output side which I've just got to watch as you can see it's still mucky it's still dirty it's um, covered in in a bit of grime um, but uh, according to Russell, if this thing isn't swelled up or misshapen or if there's any goo coming out of it, then they're generally pretty good. They're either totally stuffed or they're, they're fine. So hopefully this will get me over the line and this cost me $250, which seems a lot for something that looks like this. But these, um, these old transformers do, do rake in a bit of cash. Anyway, so oh, I'll stick this up here too. So, so far, what is the tally now that we know about this transformer being $250? So the initial machine itself cost me $2,100. So $2,100 and we're adding now $250 to that price. So what else have I bought uh, from, from Russell? Um, I also bought some some feet for the legs so these are basically just um, feet which protect your floor and I bought four of those one for each leg um, on top of that we have uh, from Russell we have uh, we have a bag of rubbers to replace all of the broken and dilapidated rubbers that were on the play field um, I also have a couple of uh, flipper rubbers in there for my jungle lord as well so, so that came from uh, from Russell I'm yet to learn those prices but we'll do the tally at the end and I'll confirm what prices I paid for those um, then I uh, looked a mob in Queensland to source parts from the banana flippers that uh, that I've been that I've been wanting to actually um, make sure that I actually have um, so the flippers if you recall were made up of three parts 
and those three parts were a metal, a metal part, a metal part that looks like that, it's a bit of a skeleton of it, then a rubber and there was also a metal part which actually was basically the batten, which is the actual flipper part that hits the, uh, that gives the ball the nudge. Um, so these parts, the two skeletons and the two rubbers to go with it, they cost me $50 uh, from a mob in Queensland. And I... Also from Russell, which I don't know the price of, is a thing called a, a lift bar. This is uh, a channel that sits underneath the back glass while it's in the box and it gives a lift um, and I'll just show the end, the end of this. So you can see that that's the, the glass actually sits, the pane of back glass fits actually inside this channel here and, and then the lip on the side here allows you to put your fingers up and pull the glass out. Now I believe these things are around the, the $30 to $40 mark so again I will confirm that with Russell and make sure that our tally sheet is correct. Then I went ahead and did an order from a Melbourne mob called rtbb.com.au and I made a big order from there. So everything from here on out cost me another $500. So a bit of money, but there are a few uh, fairly cool things in here. So first up we have some replacement coils. Um, these are the things that sit inside the mechs in the pinball machine. They're the things that actually, uh, you know, flick things around or um, pop up the drop targets or kick the ball around from um, out of slingshots and things like that. So there's a number of coils I needed to replace. In fact, all of the coils I needed to replace. And I'm only halfway there with replacing them. So that $500 mark, I've got a bit to go uh, with another order which I'll get to at the end after I talked about these ones. So, so far in this bag I've got six um, SG23850 DC coils and they are for the play field. And so we've got those. We also have some SFL2030 uh, 3800 DC um, uh, coils as well. These are for the flippers. So they will be helping me in, in, in regards to uh, getting the flippers going again. Now they've got two numbers, 2300 and 3800, because flippers actually require two different voltages to be applied to them so that they don't burn out uh, when you hold the coil in and you basically hold the button in and, and the coil in a certain spot to hold it there. It drops to a low, lower voltage and therefore avoids burning itself out. So we've got two of those, one for each flipper. And to go with that, uh, to go with that, we have a Williams 1979 flipper restoration kit. And that has all the parts uh, involved in, in um, uh, re restoring two brand new, the, the flipper assembly on the play field. Now, I'm only going to sort of briefly show these things, these bags and things like that, because there'll be other videos when I go to actually um, put the flippers onto the actual machine. I'll go through all the parts then. Anyway, so that's the flipper rebuild kits or restore kits. Um, we also have two nice new red shiny buttons there we go shiny buttons and therefore the foot is on the side of the cabinet so pretty cool now on to our well we have a, a couple of springs here so we've got five springs there and I believe they're for these particular five or six springs. Um, so one are for returning certain mechs into the right position and the other ones are to add to uh, coils. So 
So this is the bag of springs that I've ordered and that leads me to another spring which is for our plunger and that's the the, the spring that sits on the outside of the cabinet when you see uh, when you see the cabinet and you go to pull your plunger back this is the spring that sits right there behind the knob uh, then we have the various pieces for our pop bumpers so oh that's what those springs are for they're for the pop bumpers so this bag of tricks is a replacement for all the leaf switches of our pop bumpers and um and so there are the leaf switches there, the five sleeves for each one of those coils and those, uh, those um, springs before are for those particular um, mechs as well. So for the pop bumpers. And to continue on with the pop bumpers we have um, some what are called skirts. And they're the things that actually sit underneath each pop bumper. Um, we also have some of the internal mechanisms and some Bakelite um, uh, replacement parts there to get those mechs going and we have some slingshot or um, sorry drop I can't remember what they're called kick out balls so this is a replacement to uh, the plastic parts on the play field that were cracked and broken um, and the last thing in this bag is uh, for our drop targets is a whole bunch of circuit boards that actually are the contact switches. So that's, that's what those are. So, and then last uh, but not least is we have a ball and this is not a pinball. This is for our tilt. There's a channel inside the tilt which if someone lifts up the front two legs and tries to shake the machine around, this ball gets slidy, uh, slides up and down a track and can detect when someone does that and then tilt the machine. This one though is an actual pinball. So we've got a Ninja uh, quality pinball ball for that machine. So that's that. So. And that's where we're at. We've got a bunch of things to buy yet. What we have to do now is actually order some more of the things that were harder to find in Australia. So I'm going to go back to make an order from Marco over in the US and get the rest of the things that I actually couldn't get. All right, quick recap. We have all of our boards. We have our capacitor and display panels etc we've got our we've secured our transformer we've secured our lift bar for our back glass we've got feet for our legs we've got banana flippers we have a set of rubbers brand new to go onto the play field some locks we have a new capacitor although i'm probably not going to use that we have our flippers um, rebuild kit and coils We've got flipper buttons for the cabinet. We have a, a tilt ball and a ball for playing on the play field. We have our coils. We have replacement parts for um, the pop bumpers and for our drop targets. And I think that brings us to the very end of that tally. And right now on screen, you'll see how much I've actually spent. All right. So... One last thing, I just want a big shout out to Russell at South Australian Pinball and Arcade. He's the person who I actually purchased the machine from and he's the one who's been pulling out all stops to try and help me to get to a point of restoring this um, uh, to an operational state. Russell, thanks very much. Um, and uh, obviously I think I'm gonna have to do a video out at South Australian Pinball and Arcade just to show you the arcade that he's got going out there and also run through some of the workmanship that they actually do and you know some of the uh, things that they're working on in regards to restorations that they're doing. Um, so look forward to that future, uh, that future video coming soon. Um, next, we're going to probably look at 
putting our cabinet back together and we'll uh, start embarking on even repopulating some of the play field after I give it a little bit more paint touch up and maybe some protector um, protection in the way of clear coat. All right, you've been watching Prop Maker. Roll the thing. <laughs>